Hello everyone, I'm going to talk to you about philosopher Cuauhtémoc Constli. Cuauhtémoc Constli is a philosopher from ancient Mexico, from the region of Puebla, which he had some unique ideas about philosophy. And uh, he worked a lot to seek the reality of the truth of everything that we know in this world. But at the end, he became a person who suffered a lot. He was in great anguish. He himself said that. He declared it. Cuauhtémoc Constantly was in anguish, literally, because of what he had found during his philosophical studies. But his ideas, what he found, would be revealed, and boy, it would be revealed in a great audience and in a great gathering, because King Tecayehuatzin of Huesotzinco invited all philosophers from the time to his palace to have a meeting, this great conference of philosophers that would be gathered in his own palace in Huesotzinco. Now, this was a great opportunity for Guauteconsli because not only he received the invitation, but he wanted to express his anguish, his suffering of what he had found during his philosophical endeavors. Now, why did King Tecayehuatzin, who himself was also a philosopher, by the way, and uh, he had a lot of interesting philosophies to talk about, but Tecayehuatzin himself wanted to know the truth, the reality of Inxochit Inquicat. Now, Inxochit Inquicat, it means in English, the flower, the sun, which it expresses with allegories and metaphors the ideas of philosophy, of arts, of goodness that human beings can reach. This idea of Inxochitl may be complex, but it encompasses all these areas of philosophy and the human thought to discover who they are through arts, through poetry, and through good deeds that human beings can be able to achieve. Now, why is it called in Xochitl Because we have to remember, and this is very important, that not only Nahuatl, which was the language of the Aztecs in ancient Mexico and a lot of Nahuatl people, including the regions of Puebla and Tlaxcala, from where a lot of philosophers were from, uh, but al almost all of the languages from ancient Mexico and Central America, the Anahuac, which is the correct term, uh, this area had a lot of languages which work through metaphors, through allegories. For some reason, there is a difference between translating from those languages to our own because something may be lost in translation and that's why we have to give not only the literal sense of the word but also the metaphorical sense the idea that the ancient Mexicans wanted to portray to people, to themselves and to us the people from the future, as you may well know now, in this conference this conference of philosophers King Tecayehuatzin really wanted to discover, to see, to search the meaning of uh, in Xochitl in Quicat. Now, we don't know if King Tecayehuatzin and philosopher Cuauhtémoc were actually friends. What we know is that back then in ancient Mexico there was a network of philosophers and thinkers that spread all over the known world. We know this because we have, we have found a lot of philosophers making praises to other philosophers or we have found philosophers comparing their own ideas 
with those of other philosophers and they sometimes mention them by name or by their nickname because sometimes philosophers had nicknames or nom de plume anyway for this occasion Waute Constantly needed to express his suffering but be eloquent as possible because he didn't want to fall to basic cynicism so imagine the, re the reunion you can imagine the reunion of these great philosophers of these great thinkers they were the greatest minds in the land in this our old world and they were all gathered in the court in the palace of Huesotzinco, the home of Tecayahuatzin. So you can imagine Tecayahuatzin in his throne. You can imagine all the other philosophers and the people as well. They were nobles, they were people, they were ambassadors and what have you. There were a lot of people that over there in that occasion and we know that because this momentous occasion was remembered for centuries, even well after the arrival of the Europeans here in the Americas, because they mentioned that uh, reunion to the Spaniards, to the Hispanics, when they arrived to ancient Mexico. So we know this was a momentous occasion, not only for ancient Mexico, but as well for a philosophy, because worldwide, Philosophy, that's all what it's about, to discover what's the truth behind reality, behind this world. So, the reunion started. Each philosopher had a chance to participate, one by one. Each started to express uh, their own ideals, their own point of views of in Xochit, in Quiquet the flower, the song, which is this philosophical idea in general, uh, through song, through arts, through good deeds. So each participant started, you know, uh, doing their own speech, but the speech was not only spoken, but it was almost sung to perhaps the percussion or drums in the background uh, these drums would slowly uh, go in tune with the speech each philosopher would be doing in front of everyone in the court of the palace of Tecayahuatzin. Even Tecayahuatzin participated. He actually started the whole symposium, uh, the summit of Huesotzinco, where all the philosophers were gathered. He started and each one followed, one by one. Cuauhtémoc Constantly waited for his turn, and when everyone was almost blinded by this optimism about philosophy, about in Xochitl, in Quicatl, and almost, it seems like everyone was in agreement, in general agreement. That's when philosopher Cuauhtémoc Constantly jumps in and now his turn and in his turn he starts to tell his ideas of philosophy what he has found and he says he starts actually his uh, his turn by saying how this has made him to be in profound anguish those were his exact words. He was in profound, in such deep anguish. He was suffering. And the reason he was suffering, he explained, in front of all these philosophers, great thinkers, while they constantly dared to say something that caused quite a commotion that day. Is it true that human beings are real? Is it true that we, human beings, are real? Now the question is very thoughtful. He didn't say it just because he wanted to. Back then, in ancient Mexico, 
to have roots the idea of having roots like trees conveyed this metaphor of being real now it's not only about existing in this world which is one thing we should take into consideration but the other thing we should check in is if we exist truly and dignified to be part of this world now that's how they saw it back then through the roots that each tree or plants had but also they had this idea that human beings as well had roots that everything in this world had roots now the question for philosopher Cuauhtémoc constantly was is it true that we human beings have roots as well are we real that's the whole idea is it true that we human beings are real how can we know that and he explains that and he asks that how can we know we are real that we exist now this idea doesn't contravene the idea of Descartes of René Descartes about je pense donc je suis cogito ergo sum it doesn't contravene that idea we know we exist that's the issue the problem is how do we know we who are thinking that are real and if we are real how do we know we are truthful to this world and if we are truthful to this world how do we know we are dignified now let me explain that last connotation imagine you give a girl flowers so you're giving this girl flowers but you're gonna give you're gonna give her of course real the real deal you don't want to give her plastic or one dollar you know from the one dollar store flowers you want to give her something of worth and that's the idea are we human beings worth because the only way to be worth is if we're real if you're not real you're not worth things that are real and that have roots are worth a little bit of Darwinian philosophy there Charles Darwin talked about that the idea of being able to survive gives you the right to live but to live you have to have had survived now this idea of quote constantly was referring to being worth so you have to explain yourself you have to ask yourself are we real and if we are how can we know we are truthful and if we are truthful are we worth it are we dignified about that because trees are trees have roots and all trees that have roots are strong firmly attached to earth that that was how ancient mexicans the natives back then our ancestors my ancestors saw it because if trees have roots they are worth it because they can be strong against winds storms and any issue life may bring upon them the same same goes for human beings if we have roots if we have real we may be able to face all the issues and the problems that life also throw us at us it may not be wind like trees but our own issues matter as well trees have their issues plants have their issues animals have their issues we human beings as well but the idea is are we worth it that we may overcome those issues now everyone in this summit of philosophers were desperate because they saw this pessimism coming from the the from these ideas of Cuauhtémoc constantly but he went further and he said 
if we human beings we're not even sure if we're real how can we know that our philosophy that our beliefs that whatever comes from us whatever we think how do we know that's real if we're not real or worse if we we don't even know if we're real if we live in this doubt how can we not question our own philosophy our own thinking our own uh, way of thinking of how this world works we may have an idea but if we're not even real if we're not even worth for this world then what's the point of us throwing the ideas having this whole conversation about philosophy that's what Guaute Costly said and every other philosopher they were trying to get in because they wanted to almost probably interrupt him they were desperate to talk to have their their turn but the final blow that wasn't the final blow the thing that angered most of them and which has a profound philosophical uh, basis to think about because this really will rock your world if you're into philosophy but also in all philosophies including our human beliefs and every idea that emanates from us what philosopher Quote constantly said was what we really know what we're sure about is that we're here in this world ignorant lacking information of what this world is made of of what, where we come from the reason of us being here the reason of life itself of existence of this whole universe this is what we are sure philosopher Quaute constantly said this is what we're sure that we are ignorant that we don't even know so we have this whole, whole idea around philosophy and this whole idea about discussing it between philosophers but we don't know if we the people are real so we don't know if our ideas may be real if we're not real but for the but if we go beyond that we don't we know what we know is that we come here oblivious of all things and even worse not only we we are born oblivious because we are born without any information of who we are we learn when we come to this world but when we leave this world we leave it almost like we arrived ignorant because in the end we're not sure we're not sure of what reality is what this is what this whole reality this universe is we don't even know who we are why what we were doing here and those who claim to have the answer or the key to open this conundrum are humans and if humans are not real that's what the uh, philosopher quote constantly said and that's the whole point if people are not real then our ideas are not real you can imagine everyone with their minds blowing off you can imagine everyone desperate to talk people were shouting people wanted to intervene well, that's why I think the reason how why I think that happened was because Tekayawatsin had to intervene and at that point King Tekayawatsin intervenes himself he, he himself tries to intervene and to calm to soften things he even gave a minute speech trying to soften everyone and calm down that to calm everyone down because everyone was um, surprised by what philosopher Guaute constantly said uh, a lot of people that came after Guaute constantly and after the Calle Watson's uh, minute intervention to calm everyone down everyone referenced at some point or another uh, what Cuauhtecóstli had said 
in an effort to see it again in an optimistic way. But the point was made and not many people knew how to respond to philosopher Cuauhtecomstli. So everyone just kept, you know, blindly talking about philosophy and talking about how they can dismiss what Cuauhtecomstli said, but the damage was done. And it is very important because I think personally that the reason why this summit in Huesotzinco was remembered, it's because of these, not only all the interventions that each participant had, but how in the middle of the whole Congress of Philosophers, how just in the middle, the ideas of Cuauhtecomstli was the trigger for everyone to snap. And when we see that, that's probably why it was remembered. That's my personal theory of why it may have been remembered like that. It's like when we talk about something, we don't remember it because nothing happened, because it was something that not, not, something not worth to mention or nothing important happened during that time. But in this case, there was indeed something important. And when we when we read it and we when we see that when we see that we it's like almost like a short film. It's like you see all the philosophers going up with their optimism and rooting for philosophy and for in short it quick at the the problem is that well they constantly brought a crude reality and we have to remember that that it's what, what we are asking from philosophers and that is what we are asking from thinkers. So we're not just asking for good things or to comfort ourselves in this life, in this world. We want the truth. We want reality. And here it is. A philosopher, a native philosopher from ancient Mexico, from the Anahuac, from the region of Puebla, Cuauhtecomstli, he gave you an idea about what reality may be. And in this case, reality, yes, it may be crude and blunt, but you know reality and life, it's like that. And maybe we need to hear more like this. Because after all, philosophers, they should be talking about reality and thinkers and people should see reality and not just what they want to hear thank you so much for listening to me remember if you have any questions or comments don't hesitate to let me know thank you so much